Hello and welcome to the final Catalan Cymru revision session. This is for AS Media Studies and this session is going to focus on film, looking at the Wales and Hollywood section of the exam. My name is Miss Hales and this evening I'll be presenting the session. If you want to ask any questions, jot them down, join us for the live session next week. This will be about 45 minutes long, but we are going to record the session. So if you feel you miss anything, go back and watch it again. I will be taking you through the different sections on Unit 1, talking through the questions and successful ways to respond to them. Today we're going to look at film in Wales and Hollywood. Last week we looked at the news and the week before we looked at the um, selling images. So we've covered all the sections of the AS exam. Hopefully by the end of today you will be familiar with the types of writing questions on Unit 1, Section C. You'll be able to find the answers for these and you'll be able to structure a response. I'm also hoping you'll be familiar now with the mark scheme and the success criteria for this section. I'm sure you're already aware, but this exam is two and a half hours long and you're going to have three sections to deal with. Each section is on a topic that you've already prepared. So music, video and advertising, news and then film. The section B and the section C, which is the one we're looking at this evening, should take you about 40 minutes and it's often one short answer, one longer answer. On each topic, obviously. So the paper, this is the front of the paper for you to be familiar with it. We know it's the unit one paper because unit two is your coursework. We're looking at section C today. We have looked at the other two sections already. You need pens, you need highlighters if they are comfortable for you to use them in the exam. And you need to make sure that you refer to the theorists to back up your analysis when you're doing this exam. You've got to refer to set texts and so use the theorists to help you do that. In the exam, make sure you use those marks as a guide to how much needs to be written. You need to focus on your set texts and make sure you show that breadth of understanding. You need to use a range of terms, not just technique spotting, but using the terms to analyze the um, sections that you're looking at. And you need to bring in the relevant theories as well. So this is the framework. You're going to be very familiar with this by the time you get around to your exam. You've got the four aspects of this to study for this section. So you know you're going to be looking at the media language, looking at the codes and conventions, the techniques, how that creates meaning in a film. You're going to be looking at the film industry. You're going to be looking at how the media presents those issues and events and, and social cultural groups in the films that you're studying. And you're going to be looking at how the audience respond to them. So you will have studied, by the time you come to your exam, you will have studied two films. They'll be on the same genre, but one will be produced in Wales and one will be produced in Hollywood. Whilst you're studying that, you will have examined the film industry, the audience, and you will be familiar with the codes and conventions of moving images. You will need to be familiar with that industry as well, because you are going to be asked about distribution or production, and you'll be asked, expected to be able to refer to those as well as you're going. So this perhaps might be a, a good wake up um, call for you. Maybe think about this. What do you already know about these companies? What have you already studied in your course? Perhaps you might like to do some of your own individual research. Perhaps you might like to think about some of these things for each of those production companies. You may have done this in class. You may have done this with other people in your groups, but maybe think about who they are. What is the history behind that company? What kind of films have they already been producing? And therefore, how does the film that you're studying fit into the categories that they've already made? Um, you might want to look at the global reach of the company. You might want to look at ownership and control. There are lots of aspects that you can study to help you gain an understanding of how these production companies work, how they make a profit um, and how they produce and distribute the films that they, they're making. Something else that you could do as part of your um, revision, part of your practicing, is to go over some poster analysis. I've got one here from the WJC, which they've used um, to help you understand how these posters are put together. 
So there are a series of questions here, which if you work your way through them, will help you to deconstruct the poster there and consider how that is creating a sense of genre as well as advertising the, the film. So looking at the um, way in which the different images have come together to create a poster and build that um, idea up of the genre. So useful to spend some time on this, pause it here, maybe have a deconstruction of it and look at it for yourselves. In this particular exam, you're being expected to understand uh, several different critical perspectives. So you're being asked to look at media language with Roland Barthes, Todd Roth and Neil, and you've been asked to look at audiences with the Stuart Hall reception theory. So have a think about that now. In your exam, how are you going to apply that? Well, Neil talks a lot about genre, and so he says that genres are instances of repetition and difference, and that genres are not systems but processes of systemization. So when you look at a range of images from the films, is that true? Does that fit your reading of those films? Are those um, processes of systemization being used to create meaning in the film that you've studied? So. Here's an example of how you might look at that. You've got two stills here, both of which are taken uh, inside a school. We know that they're taken within inside a school because the mise-en-scene, the set in there, the props tell us that it's there. The costume in the um, more old fashioned school setting tell you that it's in a school because they're wearing school uniform. In the second one, you might be um, familiar with this, the American school system. You might recognise that as being from a Hollywood film. So by deconstructing those, you help to understand the genre. You've also got the design conventions that you can look at, the colour codes and the lighting, with one being much brighter, much more um, lit up than the other. And that's something else that you can consider and analyse and build up. OK, so if you were going to try and deconstruct those two um, stills, you might be able to use this table to help you. Again, this is from the WJC and this is something that was provided to help pupils begin to understand how to break down the elements of a picture of a still image. So I use this with my classes. We talk about how the camera has been positioned. So how far away is it from the actors that are um, part of the scene? Is that camera moving? Is there a sense of it panning in or zooming or um, moving in some way to follow the action? You might want to look at where the story is set, which um, images are being shown to you for you to make a decision on um, where this, this still is coming from. You might want to use Bart's with the codes. So the Enigma codes or the action codes are there things that are happening in that scene which help you to understand Bart. You might want to look at the sound, obviously not in a still, but if you've watched a very short clip, you might want to consider the uh, sound and then obviously look at the lighting. Consider how that lighting is working in that image that you're looking at. So this is really useful to break down the different things that you need to consider when you're looking um, at moving image. So in a still that's been taken from an exact from a film, you could have a look at that and consider that. This is another way that you can look at them. You can look at a um, still from a, a movie and consider how is that genre being created. So remembering that we're considering the theorist. So we're looking at Neil, remembering that we're looking at those repetitions and differences that are being presented to us and looking at this image, what's being repeated here? What's being reinforced in the idea of horror that's being presented there? How does it suggest that genre? Um, does it suggest a sense of narrative? Is there a story happening in there? And then you might consider whether this is a British or American film and how you know that. So it's useful to think about these sorts of questions when you're looking at a text that you need to be deconstructing. So perhaps this is a good time for you to pause now and consider the films that you're studying. Maybe look at how they've used light. So spend a little time considering how the light has been used. Maybe compare how the lights are used in the two films that you've studied. Think about reasons why that might have happened. 
So when you are analysing lighting, some of the things that you might want to consider, the mise-en-scene of the image. So when you're looking at the way that picture is put together, everything that's included inside that scene in order to create that image, you might want to think about the subject, where is the focus of that scene. You might want to think about the setting, so you might want to think about the iconography that's being used, and you definitely like to consider the lighting. So the lighting is part of that mise-en-scene, it helps to create that sense. Remember if we look back at those school images, one was very dull, very dark, very gloomy, whereas the other was very bright. And you might want to analyse why they've chosen to do that, what the differences are. So perhaps when you want to consider the lighting, maybe think about where the light is coming from. Is it being lit from above? Have they got a fill light? Have they considered lighting from below to get rid of shadows or create harsher shadows? You might want to think about, is the light consistent? So is that light casting a bright light across the entire scene? Or is there uh, elements of shadow being used as well? What is being highlighted? Is there a ratio of light to dark? And then obviously, always, what is the effect of that? Consider why somebody has chosen those effects. Because obviously, in a film, it's again a very highly constructed medium and when you've put together that image you're thinking about all the different things that go into it very carefully. So here's another table that you might be able to use in order to do those sorts of things and this one will start to make you consider the audience. You might want to think about whether the audience is accepting the dominant ideology here, whether they're negotiating, whether they're um, rejecting it. So you might want to think um, for the two films that you've studied, what's the situation, how is the character, the narrative and the development being um, explain to that audience and how does the audience then take that on then consider film b consider the same thing look at the sound look at the lighting look at the iconography look at the dialogue when you're looking at all of those um, aspects you're considering the effect that has on the audience and this one will make you consider that audience in a lot more detail final table that you might like to use We've used this one to consider the trailers. So we looked at the two trailers for the two films that we're studying in, in class and we decided to do a comparison of them. So looking at film one, film two, looking at Todorov, looking at the semiotics, looking at the binary opposition, the genre, the audience, the position and the different readings. So using this as a resource to break down the trailers for the two films that you've studied and again consider why have those elements been used? How is that engaging the audience? And so um, when you're looking at Todorov, looking at that idea of a story, is there a deception to that story? Is there a possible resolution to that story? If you're going to look at the semiotics, are there codes that are being used, so the action codes, the enigma codes, to draw you into that story? Trailers are really good at using enigma codes to create that sense of desire to watch and to find the answers. Maybe think about the binary oppositions. Um, again, trailers try and create a very intriguing idea in a very short space of time. So they use those binary oppositions as a shorthand to try and explain what's going on in the story. So what binary oppositions do you see? So it's a really useful one to look at your trailers. So here, again, it'd be worth pausing and considering whether you understand all these different uh, terms. And what you would do with this slide is you would try and match the term to the definition. So these are not in the right order. These are not put right yet. You would have to match those up. So pause here, consider those uh, words and see if you can match them to the definitions. And then I've given you the answers then as well. So you've got the term and you've got the definition here. Some really useful terms when you're trying to deconstruct the sound in a film. They're useful to help you look at key scenes and consider how tension is built up or how the um, story is developed or how the character is being built up in this particular aspect of the film. So using those words to try and uh, analyse the sound that's in the film. OK, so we've mentioned Bart's a couple of times this evening. So here are the key codes that you might like to use when you're considering whether um, a film is using those codes and conventions.
So perhaps you might like to look at BARTs and the action codes, codes of action that help you to place the details in a plot. Maybe the Enigma codes, these are the ones that make you ask questions. These are the ones that draw you in because you want to know the answers. The Semic codes, these are the ones that help to describe the character or the setting and you're using the mise-en-scene there. You're looking at what has been included in that scene in order to help create that meaning. Referential codes, they're the ones that show you when it is set or where it is set. And then obviously the symbolic codes, the codes that stand for something more than the obvious meaning. They're giving you an extra layer of meaning in that, in that film. And so you would consider those and how they've been used in the films that you've been studying. OK, and then just a really quick recap for you of the key narrative theorists that you might want to be thinking of when you're looking at films. We've mentioned them already this evening. So Todorov for your structure of the story, Prop for your character roles and Levi Strauss for those binary oppositions that are used to help develop the story. So those are useful when you're trying to break down and consider a story. So Remember, you have to apply the theory, not just identify the theory. Remember that you have to use that theory to try and build up your answer. So if you're trying to apply Hall, you might want to think um, why an audience might want to watch the film. So consider how that audience has been drawn in. You might want to consider why some audiences might not want to watch the film. Who's going to be put off by the trailer or the poster or the film? You might want to think about whether a trailer has different layers of appeal. So would a trailer appeal to different audiences in different ways? Maybe have a think as you're watching a trailer who the primary audience might be, and that gives you an idea of the, the film and who that film is being aimed at. It might be worth trying to think about whether you can identify a preferred reading. Is there a, a, a main dominant reading to this film or do you think it's, it's ambiguous anyway and that people will be negotiating their way in? You might want to consider what the producers want their audience to feel and think when they watch the trailer. What are the producers trying to evoke in their audience? And then obviously you yourself will have a personal reaction as well. Did you like the film? Did you accept it? Did you negotiate a way in? Did you reject the film entirely? How did you feel when you watched the film? It's good to put personal opinions in as you're answering these questions. So here's another series of questions to help you analyse some of the main points in your film. So when we studied um, film, we stopped the film and, and considered certain key scenes that I thought would be very useful because they demonstrated certain things that I wanted my pupils to be aware of. So maybe thinking about um, some key scenes from the films that you studied and then you know, how has genre been established? What has the film that you've studied done to establish the genre um, that it's working within? Maybe think about the mise-en-scene. Um, what information do we learn about the narrative from the, store, from the shots? Maybe think about the camera itself. What camera shots are being used? What's the purpose? What's the effect of that? Maybe think about the narrative and how the narrative is developed. And maybe think about the visual codes. So it's worth doing these deconstruction practices every now and again as you're studying your film to try and bring your attention to some of the key scenes that you want to be able to refer to in the exam. It's a good way to revise, watch part of the film, stop it, consider the scene that you've just watched, try and break down the elements of it to try and analyse the, the genre or the narrative or the character development. Give yourselves different focuses every time you do it and see what you can find in your film. So now we're talking about the past paper question. So I've given you a 2018 past paper and as with the news online, there are two questions to answer or two parts to the question. The first part of the question says explain the importance of co-production to the Welsh film industry. It says refer to the film made in Wales that you have studied. So this is telling you exactly what aspect of the um, industry they want you to look at. They want you to look at co-production and they want you to look at Wales. So it, it, it immediately thins down your answer. It gives you the real focus that you need, hones you in on the key things that you want to talk about. 
it's only worth 10 marks. So you need to make sure you give some very good points, but you're not writing a massive amount on this. You're not deconstructing the entire film. You're looking at the idea of co-production. The second part of the question focuses in on the theory and it says how conventional is the narrative structure of one of the films you've studied? Use Todorov in your response. So this time they're not directing you to the film, but they are directing you to the theorist that they want you to use. They've also used that keyword conventional, which I think is a really uh, interesting way of phrasing the question. And you can argue for or against that. You don't have to agree that your um, film is conventional. You can argue that it is non-conventional. That's fine as long as you've got those backups, as long as you've got those points from the film to help you um, analyze that. That one is worth 20 marks, so you're going to need to write more. You are going to need to write in more detail on this one. So I've given you the mark scheme for 3A. So you've got the co-production question. And if you look at the different bands, you can see the way in which those answers are broken down. So for the higher bands, you need excellent and accurate knowledge or good accurate knowledge. You need to be thinking about the co-productions and giving good examples, building up how that's worked in the film that you've studied. For the lower bands, you're becoming more descriptive. You're just sort of giving loose examples. You're not analysing how it's um, been used. So here is what the examiner is expecting. And they really want this detailed knowledge and understanding. So the importance of co-production, the significance of patterns of ownership, so breaking down who owns the company and how they've worked with other companies. Looking at economic factors, um, especially considering um, the industry in Wales, especially considering the grants that are available and the um, perhaps the shortage of funding. So you might want to consider that. And then how that sh process of production distribution shapes the films. So the films that you will have looked at will be made in Wales and you will have done one of that list there. You do not need to do all of them, you will have done one of them. Um, so my students studied at Llavrgell for example and we talked about that in terms of the um, companies that were um, working together, the grant funding that they had, the um, ways in which they worked together to create that film okay and you will have studied this with your teacher in class so paying attention to that thinking about the way in which that was produced okay so 3b was asking about the narrative structure and it specified todorov so you have to mention todorov in your answer and obviously, if you've got excellent, detailed, accurate knowledge, you're looking at the higher levels. If you're satisfactory, generally accurate, then you're looking at the middle and the lower pants. So obviously, thinking about that theorist, thinking about the way in which the story of your film has been developed and whether it is conventional or not. Conventional being that keyword. So how do you go about writing an answer in the exam? Well, it's the same as writing an essay for coursework. You need an intro. You need four or five good points and you need a conclusion. When you're making your four or five good points, you need very specific examples with detailed reference to theorists and you need that language. You need that terminology, that subject specific terminology to show that you know what you're talking about. Given that you've got Todorov, you're going to be trying to use the words such as disequilibrium, equilibrium, resolution. You want to be talking about the key terms that are familiar to you from your study of Todorov. So have a think. What do you think you'd need to include for the examiner? What would you personally need to include in your response in order for you to hit those top grades, those higher bands? So perhaps pause here and have a look at it. OK, so here is um, an example of an answer. Which 
considers the conventionality of um, the film Shutter Island, which is the film that we studied in conjunction with the Llyfrgall. So the candidate has started by using the terms in the question, how conventional the narrative structure is. This candidate has argued that perhaps it isn't conventional because it doesn't begin with an equilibrium. They show that they know the film by talking about how the characters are on their way to an island after a patient from the hospital has escaped. However, they're going to do a job and investigate the mysterious happenings. So technically there is an equilibrium. So this candidate is trying to look at both points of view, trying to say that, well, it's not really an equilibrium because we don't see where they come from. However, because they're going to do their job, that is the equilibrium for them. So the candidate is using the language of the exam. They're using the theoretical terms that they need. They're looking at the question very carefully. The candidate goes on to say that the equilibrium is broken when they realise suspicious going on in the island. Um, the fact that a patient has gone missing. So this candidate has not necessarily written this in the clearest way. So this is perhaps one place where they could be developing their answer by making sure that their point is a bit clearer. But they're using the terminology again and they're looking at the disruption in the film um, and they talk about the narrative structure. They then start to talk about the codes and they talk about the storm as the first sign that things are going to go wrong. But they've stuck to Todorov and they've looked at the idea of um, recognition. So the storm causes the entire plot to come to a halt. Teddy and Chuck attempt to escape the harsh winds and return to shelter. The plot then heads to a recognition. Teddy, upon realising this, scours the island and looks for an exit point. So this candidate is familiar with their film, familiar with the characters, familiar with the structure. They're able to refer to terminology and refer to the theory. So they're doing well, but they need to have perhaps more clearer points, perhaps a little bit more analysis of how it's conventional. Obviously, this is a part of the answer. There'd be much more of this answer. Um, this candidate wrote two and a half, three sides in their exam, so they did write it detail. So think about this and consider, you know, has the candidate answered the question? What has this candidate done well? What could they have done better? And what theory have they applied? Have they done well in apply applying that theory from the question? This is the indicative content from the examiner. So what does the examiner want you to include in your answer? If you notice that first point, all points that are valid should be credited. It is not expected that the response will include all of the points listed. So be aware that when the examiner is looking at your response, they have that proviso. Please consider all valid points and please make sure that you know, it's not an exhaustive list. You don't have to have everything on that list. Have a good mark. And I think that's reassuring often when you can see that the examiner's on your side, the examiner's trying to find the best in your response, the examiner's trying to give you the best mark they possibly can. It's a very positive marking process. So some of the things that the examiner will be looking for um, is an understanding of range of aspects. So this breadth of knowledge, making sure that you cover a range of different points. Um, it looks at the higher end, the question is going to look very closely at the idea of convention and be able to argue both for and against the idea of conventionality. They also want you to be able to use Todorov um, explicitly so that you are referring directly to that theory and you are using the terminology from that theory. So at this point, it would be a good idea to pause and have a go at 3A and 3B. Time yourself, see how much you can write in the 40 minutes and then check against the mark schemes that are here to see what you would have had or to give yourself an indication of what you might have had in the exam. Obviously, it'd be worth then checking with your teacher as well to see what your teacher thinks of it. So specifically, what does it look like when you show knowledge and understanding of Todorov? You look at the construction, you look at the structures, the techniques and the conventions. 
you look at the narratology, so you look at the idea of equilibrium and disequilibrium, and you look at the way in which narratives are resolved, which can sometimes have a particular ideological significance, especially in some of the films that you've been given for your um, AS module. There are some quite interesting messages being raised by the ending of these films. So consider those as you're going. The um, AO2. The examiner is expecting to see certain details, such as the knowledge and understanding of the narrative. Obviously, you're referring all the time to that narrative understanding because that's what the question focused you on. So the question said that you had to show whether the story was conventional or not. So they're looking for things um, which show your understanding of convention and show your understanding of that narrative. So if you'd studied a Llebrgell and Chatter Island, as my students did, they had certain things that they were expected to show in this answer. And so for library suicides, for a Llewargell, the examiner would hope that you mentioned the causal narrative, because obviously the death of the girl's mother at the start is what caused the disruption in our story. Um, you've got the story of a Llewargell following a progressive logic because the story seems to uncover the mystery as we go through. So we have this sort of build up towards the resolution, the recognition and the attempt to repair the disruption. But of course, then there's a twist to the end. So there's a restricted narrative because we've got this twist at the end which subverts those expectations. So a Llewargell is not conventional in certain aspects of its story. So you could argue that you could show the two sides to it. And with Shutter Island, obviously, if you know Shutter Island, you know that it uses that crime detective genre, uses the iconography, it sets it up as a crime detective. However, that is in um, an attempt to disguise the actual narrative structure, which is the idea of the missing patient. And the um, story then, as it unravels, becomes the story of Teddy and how his um, therapy leads to these um, gameplays, I suppose you might call it. So there's a construction within the story. There is a, a, a conceit within the story, which means that what we think is true at the start isn't actually true when we get to the middle of the story. So again, it's another way that it's not necessarily conventional, that it doesn't necessarily follow the Todorov structure. And obviously, because it uses those um, crime detective icons, the codes and conventions of the crime genre, it gives us these enigmas and codes as we read. Um, and again, we don't quite get a resolution. There isn't quite that equilibrium at the end. So again, you have a non-conventional structure. So remember that you're able to argue both sides of that um, question, that things are both conventional and non-conventional, or that there are conventional elements and non-conventional elements to it. So when we're talking about approaching the exam now, this is the third section that you will have studied. So you'll have been in the exam quite a while now. Um, it's quite possible that your brain is frazzled by this point and you need to regroup, stop, think, pause. So I would say pause now when you get to this question, spend some time planning, spend some time jotting down some of your ideas, making sure that you're going back to that question, that you're addressing both the um, keywords of the question. So with the example that we've been using, whether it's conventional or not, and also make sure that you're addressing the um, theory that you've been given by the examiner. Refer back to whichever set text the question suggests, or obviously if you've got the option, refer to both, um, but making sure that you're definitely covering the aspect that you've been told to. And then as ever in this exam, making sure that you've got those technical terms and the theoretical approaches in it. And again, spend some time jotting that down before you start, looking for the key terms that are relevant to the question that you've been given. Okay, so why don't you have a go at that essay now? Why don't you pause? Why don't you have a go at writing about the conventionality of the narrative structure of the two films that you've studied? You've got a structure, you've got some ideas, you've got the mark scheme, but obviously refer to your set text to answer that question. So have a go now, and then you can check over against the mark scheme you've been given and make sure that you're covering the right points. So what should you be doing now between now and the exam? 
I would suggest that watching both the films that you've seen in class is going to be a really good idea. Make sure that you're really familiar and very confident with the key terms that your teacher has been using in your lessons. I personally would be going back over the notes on industry, distribution and production just to make sure that I'm familiar and comfortable with the ideas behind it and that I really am confident that I know how a film company produces and distributes the films that they're making and how they engage their audience. I would also definitely be revising the theorists. Make sure that you're really comfortable with the theorists that you need to use for this aspect of the exam. So thank you for attending the session this evening. I hope you found it of some use. If you want to go back now and um, think of any questions, there's a live session next week where you'll be able to ask any questions that you've got. Hope that you're um, satisfied now and that you're confident with the types of writing questions on unit one um, for section C, that you're able to find answers for those questions and that you can structure your answer and that you're happy with the mark scheme and success criteria. Thank you very much. Tiochamaurian no stack.